Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, we are going to discuss about what essentially is very important. What is the very important area that we have to focus to become a piping design engineer? Say for an example, at the beginning stage of your career, you must be doing modeling. You must be doing some drawing preparation. You must be going through some corrections. You must be doing some corrections in the drawings and models. Basically, you will not be able to understand the design systems at all. So how one can become a design engineer if this is the practice that you are going to do for a longer period of time. So we need to have the longer vision, right? So in order to get a longer vision, we need to have an idea actually. So the idea is to become a design engineer. So in order to become a design engineer, what we have to focus on? What we exactly have to study? So people are saying we have to study the standards, we have to study uh, the, the, the techniques of drawing preparations, we have to know the materials, we have to study stress analysis and so and so blah blah blah. There are hell lot of requirements. But essentially, being a design engineer, what you have to follow? So that is the very intent of this video. So let's get into the video and before going into the video, I have a kind request to watch this video without skipping so that you will not miss any information that I have conveyed in this video. So let's get started. So being a design engineer, one must be able to think like a design engineer. So in order to think like a design engineer, we should understand the purpose of each and everything. Say for an example, one must have an understanding about the piping system, why it is required and what are the problems that we have going to face and why these are constructed in this fashion. What are the different elements that are fitted into this piping design, say for an example, valves, instruments in valves we have different types of valves are there gate valves globe valves control valves and different instruments temperature indicator pressure indicator flow elements and there are many but essentially we have to understand why are we using all these items temperature indicators are used to identify and check the temperature of the service likewise flow elements are used to monitor the flow conditions of the flow so likewise we have to understand the purpose of each and every component why do we use elbows? Why do we use T's? Why do we use reducers? In reducers, we have two different types. The standard reducers and switch. In standard reducers, we have eccentric types and as well as concentric types. So we have to understand the difference between where to use concentric type and where to use eccentric type. So basically, what we generally miss is that to understand the purpose of the design. So that is what, whenever, say for an example, you be a modeler or you be a draftsman, whoever you be it actually, but try to understand the purpose of anything. So how to understand the purpose actually, you have to ask more questions. So if you are reluctant, if you are hesitant to ask more questions, you will not be able to understand the purpose. So when you understand the purpose, first try to understand the purpose of piping items. You don't have to go to other uh, discipline. You can try to understand the purpose of all the piping items because we have a lot of items in piping itself. Once you complete the piping areas, then you can slowly try to understand the civil part, the support part, structural part. Then you can try to understand the instrument part. Then you can try to understand the electrical part. Then you can try to understand the process part. And moreover, try to understand the safety requirements. What is known as hazard. Hazard is known as something which is dangerous around your working area, which can cause an accidental and a catastrophic situation in the plant. So these are the hazards we have to remove actually. Basically, we are trying to make the plant and we are trying to make the working area safe enough for operators and persons to work actually. So when you understand the purpose, only then you will be able to design the system. Say for example, when you install a valve, you have installed at higher elevation, which is not accessible. So while placing a valve, you must be able to think that whether it is accessible or not. If it is not accessible, either you have to provide an accessible platform or you have to provide a staircase or ladder or whatever be it to access the valve. Unless until you meet the accessibility requirement, the problem still remains in the plant actually. So this is how you have to plan. Generally, we focus specifically into one activity and we don't focus in totality. Let's take another example. You are planning to do some piping design with uh, piping and valve arrangements in one particular location. But you forgot to notice there are nearby lines and nearby instruments and nearby valves in the other lines. Actually. So what you eventually end up doing is that you will occupy the accessible space for the nearby lines where there will be instruments that will be where which needs or which also needs an access. 
So during the heat of the project, you may forgot to uh, accommodate these particular requirements in the design. So when you are placing any particular new items, you should also check the accessibility of other items, existing items. So if you don't address these requirements, you are going to revise your document again and again because you will be receiving a lot of comments from client until you meet the requirement. So in order to avoid these situations, you have to think like a design engineer. So design engineer should not jump into the design quickly. First of all, you have to evaluate. You have to evaluate your design. You have to evaluate your steps. You have to plan your steps. So if you evaluate the design, if you evaluate your plan, you'll be able to systemize your design, right? So you'll be able to have this understanding in totality. So in order to get these kind of experience, I would like to give only one advice and the advice is try to observe the approaches and the decisions of experienced working professional next to you. So that is the best way to learn because learning from observation, which is the best learning that we can ever get. So try to observe how the highly experienced working professional approaches towards the design, how they are making their decision, what kind of evaluation they are making. Try to get into a lot of discussions with them. Try to ask more questions with them. Try to be humble and don't uh, try to show your intelligence with them because you want to learn things actually. So try to ask more questions and be humble and try to get more and more knowledge and try to understand the purpose of your action. Because when somebody says to place a bag here, you have to understand why do you have to place the bag there? What is the rotation of, I mean, what is the orientation of the bag needs to be there? Whether is there any reason for placing that bag? Only then you have to do it. Just because your senior says do not go and place anything somewhere actually, you have to understand the purpose. Essentially, at the end of the day, you have to develop this thinking like a design engineer to see things in totality and to understand the purpose of your design. Because tomorrow you have to present your design in front of a client. So what you will do if somebody asks you a question about a specific thing that you have did actually, you have to answer them, you have to tell them this is the reason why. So if you understand the purpose and if you don't go by someone's logic actually, you will be able to answer them properly. But if you simply follow because of that instruction has come from top, say for an example, your friend said, your senior said, uh, but you had to present, but you're not in a position to tell them the proper answer. No, you have to understand, though it could be an idea or a suggestion from others, you have to understand the purpose and you have to see things in totality. Unless until you understand the purpose, unless until you see the things in totality, you will not be able to make a good design. So you have to check the impact of your design because one of your actions may disturb the design of other systems. For example, as I said, if you are trying to place any piping or well near to the, any other nearby line, you also have to assess the accessibility, operability and the maintenance required for the nearby lines. And you also have to evaluate whether you are occupying any space which are already reserved for any other equipments or piping. So these are the things that you have to do. In order to do this, you need to understand the purpose and you have to see things in totality. So these are the two important things that I would like to advise you to focus on if you are trying to become a design engineer. So the most important thing in piping design is to understand the purpose of your design and see things in totality. So these are the two things that you have to focus in the long term to become a reputed design engineer. So I hope that this advice will help you to realize what your action is to be when you are working as a piping design engineer. So I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then bye from Sumash Chadar.